In a rocket engine, stored fuel and oxidizer are burnt in a combustion chamber. The combustion chamber produces large volumes of exhaust gases at high temperatures and pressures. The hot gases are exhausted through a nozzle which accelerates the flow. Thrust is produced according to Newton's third law of motion. As the gases are pushed out of the motor through the nozzle, an equal but opposite force is exerted on the rocket. Rockets are sometimes called reaction engines for this reason. In any air or spacecraft propulsion system, a working fluid, usually a gas, is accelerated by the system and the reaction to this acceleration produces a force on the system. In a jet or propeller driven aircraft, the gas is the air from the atmosphere. For a rocket, the gas is the hot exhaust produced during combustion. This is why a rocket works in space. The reaction pair is between the rocket and the exhaust gases. There are two main types of rocket engines, liquid fueled rockets and solid fueled rockets. In liquid fuel rockets, the fuel and the oxidizer are stored as liquids in separate tanks and pumped into the combustion chamber where burning occurs. In a solid fuel rocket, the fuel and oxidizer are mixed together and packed into a cylinder. Once a solid fuel rocket is ignited, it continues to burn until all the propellant is exhausted. Rockets and the conservation of momentum. The total momentum of any closed system is constant. Rho subscript I equals Rho subscript F, where Rho is momentum, which is equal to mass in kilograms multiplied by velocity in meters per second. Before launch, the momentum of the system is zero, as the velocity is zero. After launch, the momentum of the system is also zero. As the momentum is zero after launch, the momentum of the exhaust plus momentum of the rocket has to equal zero. The sum of the momentum of the exhaust and momentum of the rocket at any point during launch must be equal to zero. That is, equal to rho initial or the initial momentum. This means that they must be equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. So the momentum of the exhaust is equal in magnitude to the momentum of the rocket but opposite in sign because it's in the opposite direction. The change in momentum of the exhaust gases over time must also be equal to the change in momentum of the rocket over time. Change in momentum over time is equal to the force because m delta v over delta t is the same as writing ma mass times acceleration and that is equal to force according to Newton's second law. The force exerted by the rocket on the gases is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the force exerted by the gases on the rocket. We can derive an expression for the acceleration of the rocket based on the principle of the conservation of momentum and this will help to better understand the acceleration of the rocket during launch. Let's consider a rocket that is just being launched. At T1, just before the rocket is launched, the velocity is equal to zero. Whereas at T2, the velocity is equal to delta V and the velocity of the exhaust is equal to V subscript EX. At T1, before launch, the mass of the rocket is equal to M1, which is the mass of the rocket plus the mass of unburnt fuel. At T2, the mass of the exhaust gases is going to be equal to delta M and the mass of the rocket will now be M1 minus delta M. At time 1, because the velocity is zero, the momentum will also be zero. At time 2, the momentum is going to be equal to the momentum of the rocket minus the momentum of the exhaust gases because the exhaust gases are traveling in the opposite direction the rocket. Therefore that is going to be equal to the velocity delta V multiplied by the mass of the rocket at time 2 which is M1 minus delta M minus the velocity of the exhaust V subscript EX multiplied by the mass of the exhaust gases delta M. This will be equal to delta V M1 
minus delta V delta M minus V subscript EX delta M. If delta T is tiny, as in being an infinitesimally short interval of time, delta V and delta M will also be tiny, and therefore we can ignore the term delta V delta M as it will approach zero. Therefore the momentum at time two is equal to delta V M subscript one minus V subscript EX delta M. As a rocket in flight is a closed system, momentum is conserved. Therefore, the momentum at time one is equal to the momentum at time two. Rho subscript one equals rho subscript two. At time one, the momentum is zero because the rocket is stationary. Therefore, the momentum at time two must also be equal to zero. So, zero equals rho subscript two. Therefore, we can write zero equals delta V M subscript one minus V subscript EX delta M. This can be rearranged as delta V M subscript one equals V subscript EX delta M. And dividing both sides by M1, the initial mass of the rocket, delta V, the change in velocity of the rocket, is equal to V subscript EX delta M over M subscript one. All we have to do now to calculate the acceleration of the rocket is divide both sides by delta T. So delta V over delta T equals V subscript EX delta M over M subscript one delta T. And as delta V over delta T is acceleration, the acceleration of the rocket is equal to V subscript EX delta M, the velocity of the exhaust multiplied by the mass of the exhaust over the initial mass of the rocket multiplied by the elapsed time. As the fuel is burnt, that is, as delta M increases, the mass of the rocket, which is the initial mass of the rocket minus the mass of the exhaust, M subscript one minus delta M, decreases. So as the fuel is burnt, the mass of the rocket decreases. If the velocity of the exhaust gases out the back of the rocket is constant, and a constant amount of fuel is burnt over time, the force driving the rocket forward will remain constant while the mass of the rocket decreases. At launch, 90% of the mass of a typical rocket is fuel. For example, the Saturn V rockets used in the Apollo program weighed approximately 2,957,600 kilograms at launch, of which approximately 2,725,400 kilograms was fuel. If the force on this mass remains constant, as the fuel is burnt, the acceleration of the rocket will increase over time. This is in fact what we see. If you look at the graph of the g-forces experienced by the Apollo astronauts versus time, you'll see that over time the acceleration experienced by the astronauts increased from around about 1.25 g at launch to almost 4 g at the time of cutoff of the first stage engines. So during the launch, the acceleration increased over time as the fuel was burnt and the mass of the rocket plus unburnt fuel decreased. Liquid fuel rockets, such as those used in the Apollo program, can be throttled. That is, the amount of fuel being burnt in a given time can be decreased. Liquid fuel rockets can also be shut off, as is shown by the Stage 1 and Stage 2 center engine cutoff indicators on the graph. The acceleration scale on the graph is marked in g-forces or g. g-forces are the ratio of apparent weight of a person or other mass to the weight force experienced on the surface of the earth. They are a convenient way of stating acceleration and the forces experienced as a result of acceleration. g-force is equal to apparent weight over true weight is equal to mass times acceleration divided by mass times acceleration due to gravity, which is of course equal to the acceleration experience divided by acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth. G-forces are usually maintained below 4G during both launch and re-entry for manned flight, 
and this is done in order to avoid either injury or death of the crew. Summary. Rockets work on the principle of the conservation of momentum. The total momentum of any closed system is constant, such that rho subscript i equals rho subscript f, the final momentum equals the initial momentum, where momentum equals mass times velocity. The change in momentum of the exhaust gases equals the change in momentum of the rocket in a given time interval. This can be written as minus delta rho subscript e over t, where rho subscript e is the momentum of the exhaust, equals delta rho subscript r over t, where rho subscript r is the momentum of the rocket. As the change in momentum over time is equal to force, the force of the gases on the rocket is equal to the force of the rocket on the gases, but they are in opposite directions, hence the negative sign for the force due to the exhaust gases. As the rocket burns its fuel, the mass of the rocket decreases, but thrust remains constant, therefore acceleration increases. Typically, 90% of the mass of a rocket at launch is fuel. G-forces are the ratio of the apparent weight of a person or other mass to the weight force experienced on the surface of the Earth. Therefore, G-force equals apparent weight over true weight equals ma mass times acceleration over mg mass times acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth is equal to a acceleration over g acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth.